Well, DHS Director John Seelig announced he will resign by the end of this year. Governor Asa Hutchinson spoke on this earlier in the show. Also, the Stephen Group issued its 350-page report that was a bit of an eye-opener. Joining me to talk politics is KATV's Alicia Dover and talk business and politics contributor Steve Bronner. It was an eye-opener, wasn't it? Just a little bit? Yeah, it certainly was. I said the big headline coming out of it, of course, was ending the private option would cost the state, you know, $438 million. Um, so that's a big number to look at when you're looking at the budget. Yeah, your headline, Steve, was basically that um, that the, uh, the Stephen Re Group report said that the private option ought to be kept, but it should be changed. Changed how? Well, a lot more uh, work and personal responsibility, that type of things. Uh, more financial responsibility for the recipients. Right now, it's basically free health care for everyone who has incomes below 138% of the poverty line. This would, under their proposals, it would they would have some responsibility for co-pays and for premiums. Uh, there'd be a responsibility to uh, do health and wellness. And if you don't do health and wellness, there's a, p a penalty for, for not doing those kinds of things. Uh, other things, you know, uh, we'll talk about this in a minute, but the fact that it appears that DHS is not very good at tracking uh, who is eligible and who lives where. The, the, the Stephen Grip uh, you know, suggested a, a, a state uh, department headed within the Finance Administration depart Department that would kind of keep track of everybody in, in terms of who is eligible for what kind of state right. state uh, program. So just a lot of things that are meant to make the program have better integrity and be more about personal responsibility and be more transitional in nature. Yeah, and this speaks to a, a little bit of that tail end of what you're talking about there. The, the people that were on the rolls from out of state, the people that were deceased that were on the Medicaid rolls, this was pretty big news because it is big numbers, even though some people maybe try to downplay the percentage a little, a little bit. It was 16% of the Medicaid population. Um, what was the legislative reaction to hearing that? To me, I didn't see much of a reaction at all. Uh, when I brought it up to several legislators, um, I was told that that was not the news coming out of the day and that should not be the focus of this report. But, you know, the taxpayer looking at some of these numbers, the dead people, the people out of state, the 6,000 people who don't even ever have a record of ever living in Arkansas, that's astounding to any average person looking at this report. It's millions of dollars. Now, Senator Brian King and some others did find some, mm -hmm. uh, have some legislative reaction to it, Steve. Well, I think that this is almost like an ink blot test. You know, you see what you're expecting to see. And if you are a private option supporter, then you can read this report and say, the Stephen Group says keep the private option. <laughs> right. If you are an opponent of the private option, you can look at it and say, government can't do anything right. Of course we should kill it. And, and, and Roby, I think some of the fear, too, is that these fraudulent findings, if you want to call it that, um, will be played up by people who don't support the private option. Yeah. And so I think that maybe part of the fear there of let's, you know, ignore this a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think that it will play out in some political primaries next year in the GOP primaries in particular. But I think, too, there was also, you know, if the Stephen group had to produce a scalp for the legislature to say we found something that needs to be fixed, those out-of-staters, those dead people on the Medicaid rolls are certainly the scalp. The other scalp is, is that right after the report comes out, DHS Director John Seelig announces he's going to resign by the end of the year. Do you think that the report forced him out, or do you think he was waiting on the report before he made that statement? That would be inside baseball speculation. I, I don't know what's inside a person's head. Um, I think that there's been so many problems with DHS through the past couple of years that this this was probably going to happen anyway. It is an impossible job. Uh, by a lot of accounts, John Slick did a lot of, did a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. you know, he, he, he managed this agency through the Affordable Care Act, the private option, the, the switch to this new major coding system that they're going to. Lots of, it's just, DHS is enormous. Mm -hmm. And there's only so long you can ride this bull until it's time to let somebody else try to ride it. Yeah, and the big question is, I mean, who in the heck is going to want to take on this job? Yeah, as much as it pays, $162,000, $163,000 a year, it is still low pay compared to what people with that skill set can make in the private sector. Last question before we get out of here, though. The uh, uh, managed care was another big uh, kind of aspect that came out of this. we got to at least touch on that. How deep do you think folks will go on managed care, Steve? You know, that's, you know we have an increasingly Republican legislature. 
uh, you would think that that is something that would be more along, that, that they'd be more accepting of that. That man managed care is basically, instead of having DHS run things, you have private companies come in right. and manage them with incentives to try to keep costs low and, and a chance to keep some of the profits if they do. Um, the Stephen Group report didn't come out exactly and say, go to managed care, but it sure did try to sell it. It's you know basically $2.4 billion in savings is what it said could happen. So I, it, it could happen, but who knows? It's going to be part of the debate. Yeah, and I think on another note too, you know, they tried to kind of put it as a transitional health care. You know, it's not the end all be all. You get Medicaid and that's the end. Yeah. They want you to be transitioning to something else, you know, the T-HIP. Call it the T-HIP program as Dave Ramsey <laughs> at the Arkansas Times called it uh, a, a geriatric rapper is what he thought the T-HIP <laughs> sounded like. A dance move. Exactly. All right. Alicia Dover, Steve Bronner, thank you both very much. Appreciate it. The biggest business stories of the week, what were they? We're going to try to sort that out. Talk business and politics, Wes Brown and Michael Tilley. Now join me. Thank you, guys. All right. Biggest business story of the week. I'm going to come to Wes Brown first. He's the business editor. Well, I, the big, biggest business story is that earnings uh, uh, on Wall Street kind of started, a few of them started this week, but for Arkansas companies, they start ne next week with Bank of the Ozark and Home Bank shares on Monday and Thursday, respectively, I think. And I think what you're going to see is that uh, I, I got a feeling that it's going to be pretty bad third quarter because of the the growth, GDP growth. Bad been, for those two banks? No, bad, bad for the for for Overall. across the across the board okay. because bank basically I think banking uh, will see some see some good numbers, but when you get into transportation and some other industrial sec sectors, I think you're going to it's going to be pretty tough sled, and I think it's going to be a tough go. One of the things is because GDP growth is predicted to be down. To about it's under 1.5 percent. That's the forecast right now. And the last quarter it was 3.8 percent. Yeah. So that's a that's a two point two percentage point gap. Seeing some real reservations too in business confidence looking forward a little bit. And there have been some surprise earnings misses so mm -hmm. far mm -hmm. out, of the, out of the quarter. So and yeah, confidence and some of the CEO confidence is is um, is waning. Yeah. They're yeah. concerned about. They're seeing some of the the numbers uh, as you, we talked earlier about. This possible wall that the yeah, U.S. Kind of, economy may be hitting. Yeah, I think I think you're starting to see that where it's kind of kind of hit, hit the growth in terms of growth and the, and sales it, and people just don't have the confidence that it's going to keep the momentum is going to continue. Which is still surprising to me because gas prices That's are low and mean. interest rates are low and home sales. But are the up uncertainty and, about. Uh, one, what's happening on Wall Street, the volatility, but also in the political world. Right. There's some, a lot of uncertainty Just in terms tap. of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a tough time. All right, Michael Tilley, your biggest business story of the week. Well, I think we're going to go to retail and talk about Walmart. You know, uh, Doug McMillan took over Walmart CEO a couple years ago, and he is slowly making changes. And so the top management, he made two, two more top management changes Friday. Uh, today was um, Charles Hawley, longtime Chief Financial Officer announced their retirement. That's what they're they're calling it. And uh, uh, Brett Biggs, who's 47 years old, will step into that role. It's 47 years old, Chief Financial Officer of the world's largest company. Not bad. He's younger than me. That's yes. sad. Okay. Um, uh, another Steve Bratsby's is going to be the Chief Merchandising Officer, uh, position that's been unfilled since Duncan McNaughton left. Uh, Greg Foran has been working that, so that's a top role. Uh, Bratsby's was the top food buyer for Walmart up until now. So, and so, and then those created dominoes within the management ranks to fill in after them. And so, uh, Rosalind Brewer, now the CEO of Sam's Club, is the only executive left from the previous CEO. Now, I'm not saying she's going anywhere, but the, <laughs> the team is new at Walmart. Yeah. And this follows pretty significant job cuts, 450 job cuts at the corporate office at yeah. Walmart. Now, now those job cuts, Wes, 450, I think the Northwest Arkansas economy can absorb that. Yes. I mean, right. uh, you're yes. either going to have some folks move out of state and take other jobs because those were management right. positions right. or yeah. they may go start their own thing or go land at another yeah. place. Yeah, in, in the past, you, you know, those, those would have been tough, but I think uh, as that you've seen the growth in Northwest Arkansas, that economy, especially in the profession, professional sector you start you can absorb those type type of jobs and people can instead of leaving the state they can go to uh, uh, even some of the Walmart suppliers possibly well put that in perspective they have about 10,000 jobs more the last jobs report they had about 10,000 jobs more uh -huh. than they did a year ago so 450, so 450. Uh -huh. I hate it for those people you don't want yeah and and now those aren't 450 
regular jobs. Those are a lot of good paying jobs. Yeah. So. yeah. All right, we got less than 60 seconds left, so you guys don't get to comment on my top story of the week. And it's, <laughs> it's the way I planned it. I ran out the clock on you here. Um, I'm kind of going twofold. Trade is my theme here. You got the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement that right. has been reached, and Congress will have to debate that. And then, of course, we've had uh, the governor who's on earlier in the show talking about the Cuba trade mission that he went on. Mm -hmm. I would just couch it to say lots of opportunity for Arkansas and trade. Not going to be immediate, mm -hmm. but definitely some opportunity on the horizon. Especially in the agri sector. Especially in the agri sector. And mm -hmm. you've got a good story on our and, uh, and I think website that's about that. Point. No, it's not immediate. Don't, yeah. don't start. Long term. Don't, yeah, don't start. Literally, don't start counting your chickens on that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I'm not even going there with another one. All right. Wes Brown, Michael Tilly, thank you both very much. That's all for this week's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a busy and a productive week, and we'll see you next time.